that same green colour, just made it slightly darker. I'm just going to come up in here and put a few little indications of trees just underneath these. See how much darker I've made it though, see how it stands out now? I wouldn't have stood out if you hadn't put that dark in. That stands out beautiful now, perfect. Maybe sometimes just stick a little bush in between. So there's a little bush just growing up there. Ah, that's the one. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you where I'm going to have the trees now, the tree line, because I want these trees to come quite high now, so that they look quite far away then. It's all about depth and distance. So you've got these lovely misty areas underneath here, on all these lovely misty areas creating all these layers and that's what gives you the depth and distance that makes you feel like you want to actually go and walk into the painting so that's what we're always chasing that illusion of depth because it is painting is basically an illusion you're creating an illusion in your mind and then you're transforming it on a canvas that's all Paul McKenna eat your heart out some bigger ones in here, bigger trees, just put a few little indications under there, some distant further away trees, maybe a bigger one just here, you notice that I keep turning the brush over I use both sides of the brush. I reload both sides, twitches the ledge as I've been showing you, and then once you've used this side on the right, I always go and turn the brush around and then use the other side, just like so. That's the one. Bit more black with that again. Keep it dark. Maybe this is going to be a big one now. Just there. Right over all these other trees so that they look like they're right far behind. You notice though that I take more, much more time over the top part of the tree than I do the bottom. Because at the base you want to actually push a bit more pressure and actually open the fan brush's bristles. See that? And then that's what gives you the lovely variation in the shape of the trees because if you make these too uniformed, they don't look natural. So you don't want them to look too uniformed. You want them to look as natural as possible. going to come up to about there. Put some dark in for this. So I'll be able to finish the cabin off for you all tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that day. And I love painting this cabin. I think maybe just in front of where the log cabin is, I think I might reflect the log cabin into a little lake that's going to be down here. Just down on the very bottom part and I'll try and reflect the actual cabin down into that. Right, I'm trying to get some more dark. You know it's that when I'm tapping it, it's mixing with the liquid white and getting instantly lighter. All I do is I just get some black with the same colour. Now when you tap that in look, it gives you the variation, the shadows, the darker shadows. Just trying to get some colour in, that's all it is, just blocking it in. You could more or less do this with a paint roller. Don't be scared of getting in there and being a bit brutal sometimes. So you've got the brutal times and then you've got the times when you're really delicate. 
This is not a time to be delicate though. <laughs> so look at the time. We're five minutes in, so we're not doing too bad. Right, another tree just up there to block these in. Have a look at the green, I'll just take it a tiny bit higher. top, remember, put the pressure on then further down. The more pressure you get on, the more it opens the bristles. Reload. Go in there again and just block that out. Make it a bit more solid in the centre. Maybe sometimes you can just tap as though there's a little trunk in there or something. Right. Come up a bit higher. Notice I'm getting higher and higher as I go with these. There. Something that you get with practice is this when you're doing the evergreen trees. Definitely takes practice. So what's a good idea to do is if you can get some white card and just practice doing these evergreen trees on white card first. And then when you come to your actual painting, you'll find it a lot easier because you've practiced it already, you see. Rather than just going straight in the canvas and doing it and then being disappointed, try it first, get used to it. Preparation's everything. You'd be surprised the amount of practice I still do. And I've been painting for a long time. Practice is still important to me to keep up, to keep my arms doing the right thing. and. So like there, I'm not just tapping straight, I'm tapping down, tapping and going down. And that's what makes the bristles do what it's doing. Step back and have a look. Yep, we're getting there. A few little indications, some darker ones just down there by just loads of both sides, just pushing at the paint slightly. And then just some strip trees that's just stuck behind there. Because that's what they do with these evergreen trees. They grow in clumps and they also grow individually. So you put the clumps of them and then you'll put these highlights in front of them and then they'll look further back. Right, I think that's it for this part.